What is up guys, this is Noli here and welcome to another Payday 2 video. Today we are taking a look at the Gage Assault Packs webpage and in the process I'm going to have to play Gage. When plan A is not an option. Gage here signing in, hope you're well. Better than me anyway. Can't complain though, business has been good recently thanks to you and Bane, and I've seen better men than me end up far worse than in an armchair with wheels on. Listen, we all know that sometimes the best approach is to wait, listen, sneak and generally avoid contact. Stay low, stay dark, avoid guards and gunfire. That sort of thing. Well, in my experience, sometimes the best approach is the opposite. Sometimes being nice doesn't pay. Once in a while, you want to go loud from the start. Maybe the client demands it. Do some damage, they say. Protect the goods at all costs. Or maybe you've got a rookie on the team who fumbles the fucking pager call. Or brings heavy plate on a sneak job. Maybe you just want to give some back for all the friends who got pulped by the cloakers. Scratch an itch. Payback. Whatever the reason, sooner or later you will want to fill the air with high velocity rifle rounds and plenty of them. The latest shipment I've put together helps you do just that. We are talking heavy duty battle rifles and solid reliable designs. All have been tried and tested in conflicts across the globe. As usual they come with a range of mods and can shift their role from long range high precision to CQB or somewhere in between. I've also collected a few serious hand-to-hand -hand combat weapons, and as usual, the package comes with a set of baffling masks. Meet me here tomorrow, and I'll go through the first set. The hardware. Here we are then, for the first batch of items in the assault pack. Today we're looking at the hardware, which comes in the form of automatic rifles and melee weapons. The melee weapons are your standard assault weapons, but the new thing as of now is that all melee weapons get a concealment value. This is obviously not a problem for us as we're going full plan B, but bear it in mind if you want to sneak a blade or a cleaver or something into a secure location. I am guessing you're here for the guns though. Most people are. There's two 7.62mm classics and a 5.56mm bullet hose. And then there's the 40mm. Yep, you read that right. A dear old friend is coming back into the game. And he even brings a few modifications. Let's have a look. The Clarion Assault Rifle unlocks at level 27. It is a 5.56mm assault rifle in a bullpup configuration. It is lightweight and the design decreases the overall length. But its distinguishing feature, apart from its unconventional looks, is an absurdly high rate of fire. It derives its name from the shape of the gun. The Clarion is a shrill, narrow tubed war trumpet. Alongside this weapon we can apply a short barrel, a long barrel, a sniper barrel, a suppressed barrel, and finally, a retro grip. The Gecko Assault Rifle on the other hand unlocks at level 34. A real battlefield workhouse, the Gecko Rifle design borrows heavily from the AK family, with a gas operated rotating bolt mechanism, but improves on the original with several design features, notably a milled steel receiver and an ambidextrous cocking handle. The weapon is heavily modifiable and can be customised to fit most scenarios. With this weapon you can use the sniper barrel or foregrip, the light barrel or foregrip, the CQB barrel or foregrip, the FAB barrel or foregrip, the sniper grip, the wooden stock, the sniper stock, the skeletal stock, the plastic stock, the light stock, and finally the FAB stock. The Gavir 3 assault rifle unlocks later at level 52. It is a 7.62mm battle rifle developed in the 1950s by a leading German armament manufacturer in collaboration with a Spanish state-owned design and development agency. It is a popular weapon has been adopted by the armed forces of over 40 countries. Alongside this weapon, you can use the DMR kit, the assault kit, the PSG foregrip, the railed foregrip, the retro foregrip, the retro plastic foregrip, the retro grip, the sniper grip, the sniper stock, and the wooden stock. The GL40 grenade launcher is a different story altogether. Unlocking earlier at level 46, I'd like you all to say hello to an old friend. The thump gun, the blooper, whatever you call it. The 40mm breech loaded break action GL40 is back with a thump and a boom. As grenades are subjected to the laws of physics, 
aiming guidance is provided by a flip-up sight. Toggle it like a gadget. With the sights up, the gun is angled upwards to help you land those long shots. This weapon can be modified with a pirate stock and a pirate barrel. Let's finally take a look at our melee weapons. The bayonet unlocks at level 14. It is a clip point bayonet and a battlefield classic. Originally intended to be mounted on your rifle so you could use it as a spear, this baby rides in your pocket instead and comes out when you start wielding CQB style. The bullseye melee weapon unlocks at level 23 and is a hatchet made from a single piece of forged surgical steel with a rubberized handle. I don't even know what to say to be honest. This is not something you would bring to a fight unless you were some kind of psycho, right? I mean, this is intended for chopping logs and going camping. Not robbing banks, right? Well, the X-46 melee weapon locks at level 32 and is a single 6 inch piece of coated A2 steel in a partially serrated bowie blade configuration with a false top edge. Integrated guard and glass breaker pommel tip, the multi-purpose field design of this knife makes it useful on the battlefield as it is in an emergency. Finally, we have the Ding Dong. Unlocked at level 48, this is one of the harder melee weapons to unlock in the game. The Ding Dong is basically a tactical sledgehammer, if there could be such a thing. Originally intended for use as a breaching tool, battering ram, and pry bar rolled into one. I am guessing you'll mostly be using it for cracking heads open. Great damage and knockdown, but relatively slow on the swing. So, just some final thoughts from me as far as this DLC is concerned. I'd like to draw your attention to the video at the top of the screen that is playing on loop, and even further to the Gecko Assault Rifle and the Gavir Assault Rifle. These two seem very versatile with these brand new foregrips and kits. And as such, we're going to have some pretty awesome close range and long range weapons. But the issue with that is there is no in heist customization available at this point. Though I imagine that could be mitigated by you setting up one to be long range and one to be close range. But we will have to see exactly how effective these mods are in game come release. On top of that, the Thumper or the GL40 grenade launcher looks very strong. And thanks to the fact that they don't have much damage drop off over range, it should be very, very powerful. Also, of course, if you haven't already noted, the references to DICE, a fellow Swedish developing company, and Battlefield itself is very clear, and I really like that the Overkill team are making a little homage to good old Goldfarb's old company. And last but not least, let's talk about the concealment, because I'm a little worried about this. Why are they nerfing melee weapons? Well, I hope this is going to bring a new age of powerful melee weapons, because first of all, that sledgehammer, the ding dong, looks very, very interesting and powerful. But I do worry that this is just a straight up nerf to melee weapons, and I'd, I'd hate to see that. I'd hate to just like, not be able to use melee weapons as a contingency option at the very least on my stealth build. Though I have to admit I like the way it's a step in the direction that makes sense in the game at the very least having to bring special concealment knives. I hope this does not place people without the DLCs at a slight disadvantage but I imagine running your regular weapons will be even better than running a melee weapon so you shouldn't have to worry too much. My only worry again is just that the melee weapons are receiving a slight nerf without a buff and I would love to see a brand new melee weapon skill tree as I've mentioned before and I will be coming out with a video very soon actually showing what I'd like to see be done in a melee weapon tree itself. Guys thanks a lot for watching, I hope you enjoyed my awful attempt at a gauge voice and I will be back with you tomorrow when we get the DLC release and our masks. Thanks for watching, see you all in the next one.